Hey, hey, Janina here. So, alam ko na hindi ito yung content na nakasanayan nyo na galing sa akin, but I really felt the need to speak out about this. Last Thursday, nandito yung mga kaibigan namin sa bahay at biglang nawala yung tubig na walang pasabi. Hindi kami nabigyan ng advisory and it's been like this for almost 10 days straight. Wala kaming tubig. Maybe you're like me, nagtatanong kayo, Ano ba yung nangyayari? Hindi ko rin alam eh. <laughs> Pero dahil gusto ko talaga makahanap ng sagot, um, nagbasa lang ako ng nagbasa ng mga articles, ng mga Twitter threads. I talked to so many people who were connected to Manila Water or MWSS and people who are just interested in water. And even people who aren't, who actually posed really good points. And I guess I just want to share to you guys what I found. Sigurado ako na may narinig na kayo tungkol sa water shortage na according to Manila Water ay dahil sa El Nino. Kung hindi nyo alam kung ano yung El Nino, because honestly, when it started being spread around, I had no idea what El Nino was. So let me explain briefly. It's an irregularly occurring and complex series of climatic changes affecting the equatorial Pacific region and beyond every few years, it's characterized by the appearance of unusually warm, nutrient-poor, poor, water of northern Peru and Ecuador, typically in the late December. <clears throat> Ano daw? Basically, there's a warm current from the western tropical Pacific Ocean that travels eastward across the equator towards the coast of South America pero nagsistop siya sa mga dagat ng Indonesia and Philippines. Dahil dito, nagbabago ang panahon natin, umiinit, nagkakaroon ng tagtuyot, or drought. Pero baka inisip nyo, Janina, di ba umuulan naman last December and January? Tsaka hindi naman ganun kainit ah. Yeah, actually those are really good points because Pag-asa actually completely counters his statement saying that El Nino is the root of the water shortage. Because if it was, then all of our water reservoirs would be drying up as well. But the truth is, Angat Dam and Ipo Dam are both on regular stable levels. Ang Lamesa Dam lang ang parang bumaba ng sobra. Statistics from March 8 said that the spilling level of Lamesa Dam is 80 meters and at that time it was at 69 meters. So that's almost a 12 meter drop. So kung hindi el nino yung dahilan, bakit nga ba may water shortage? Because Angat flows to Ipo Dam and Ipo Dam flows to La Mesa Dam, but La Mesa is the only one that's depleting. So is it really el nino? So alam ko na medyo nagsimula na tayo, pero bago tayo parang before we dive into my real hard facts. Um, I just want to put out some disclaimers. First, hindi ako nagmamarunong. I'm not speaking from like a political standpoint or anything. I'm just one of the 300 barangays who are affected by this. That's 60,000 households who haven't had real running water in the last 10 days. This week, we've actually had to have fire trucks come into our village and we have to like line up with our baldes to fill it with water. Tapos wala pa silang concrete schedule kung kailan sila dadating. Minsan, they come at like 1 a.m. and we just hear the like the beeping that's saying that they're there ready to get to give us water. At minsan, naubusan pa kami ng tubig and this kind of causes some fights between neighbors and some people go home empty-handed like without water for the next day. But on the other hand, it's honestly sometimes really cute because you see all of them parang nagtutulungan sila, naghahatian ng water, even if they find out somebody else doesn't have water. So, I think Filipino spirit really shows up in times like this. So, I really appreciate that about our Filipinos. Another thing that I want to appreciate, nalaman ko lang na lahat ng nagdala ng tubig, uh, mga volunteers lang pala sila. So, thank you so much for doing that. That means a lot to us. And yeah, it's a real blessing to have fire trucks and friends who are willing to help us, give us water and aid. But it makes me think about the people who are still living in poverty because these people don't have these resources and they have even higher risks of severe dehydration or diseases and illnesses like E. coli, hepatitis, um, cholera, and so much more from just drinking polluted water. Biglang naging Miss Universe eh, but um, what was I saying again? Oh yeah, disclaimers. That was my only disclaimer. Let's move on. According to Manila Water Chief Operating Officer, El Nino aggravated it because there's so little rain nowadays. That's what he said. But he also explained that it could be or it is more of a supply and demand problem. Until 2016, Manila Water and Manila had been dependent on Angat Dam. Since 1997, ang hati ng Manila at Manila Water ay 60 and 40%. So that's 
2.4 billion liters of water a day for my Nilad and that's 1.6 billion liters of water a day for Manila Water. Pero dahil sa growth ng service connections or customers, ang concession agreement ng Manila Water ay nagkulang. This is all according to articles that I've read over the last few days. Um, pero ang naging solusyon nila para dito ay kumuha ng tubig from La Mesa Dam. So yes, baka nga dahil ito sa basic law of business, supply and demand, kaya may water shortage. Pero kahit may shortage sa La Mesa, alam nyo ba na 96% of our water comes from Angat? Okay, so we've established it's supply and demand. We need a lot more water, so we're getting it from La Mesa. But it also makes me ask, kung connected yung Angat, Ipo, and La Mesa, ba't hindi siya nabibigyan ng bagong tubig if they're all connected? Pero sabi rin ni Manila Water na hindi enough yung mga aqueducts to supply from Angat Ipo and to La Mesa Dam. So that also could be it. At sabi naman nila na predict nila yung shortage na to, but they also said that it would happen between 2021 and 2023. So that poses another question in my head. Why now? Why is it happening now? So with all of the data and research regarding our water and our people, they knew that shortage was inevitable. And Sabi daw nila, they warned us last year, but as a resident of one of the affected villages, wala kaming advisory. And sabi rin ng lahat ng kaibigan ko na wala rin silang na renege or they weren't warned at all. So kung sinasabi nila na nag-warning talaga sila, I don't think it was enough. Kasi lahat nagulat. I'm sure you watching this right now, nagulat ka rin na biglang wala kayong tubig sa bahay or biglang may na babasa kayong sa tweets sa Twitter, tweets sa Twitter. Mga tweets na biglang yung mga friends niya wala ring tubig. Kaya medyo nag panic buying kami, naubusan sa supermarket, lahat ng mini stop, 7-Eleven, wala, wala rin silang tubig. Anyway, so biglang nagkwento na lang. Ino. So syempre, dahil nakita na nila na magkaka-shortage sa in the future, of course, our government wanted to think of new ways to prevent that. So in 2014, the Metropolitan Water Works and Sewage System, haha, <laughs> nahuwa ho, and the Ko. Department of Public Works and Highways, ayon, proposed plans to ensure water security, kind of, para hindi tayo maging sobrang dependent sa Angat Dam. At ito, I'm sure na medyo familiar na kayo dito sa pangalan na to, ang Kaliwa Dam. Or Kaliwa Dam. I personally like the sound of Kaliwa a little better, so we're gonna stick with that today. Ito ay naaprubahan ng National Economic and Development Authority and the Public Private Partnership Center. But eventually, concerns were presented and environmentalists fought against it for the preservation of the Sheramaja mountain ranges and its people, the Dumag Dumagat Remontados. I hope I said that right. So according to different articles that I read on it, the project will drown about 291 hectares of forest. That would put the biodiversity of Sierra Madre in danger. Our indigenous people will lose their ancestral homes and be forced to relocate Plus, it, the project will be built over the Infanta Fault, which poses danger of flash floods to the 100,000 people living downstream the Kaliwa River. So, base sa mga nabasa ko, um, the project was eventually put on hold. Nung na elect si President Duterte, binago ng administration niya ang financing scheme from being funded by a government slash PPP to private investors and foreign loans. So, the original funding plans were changed from being an integrated PPP to a hybrid PPP. Ano yun? Okay, so simple lang to. Originally, ang plano para i-fund ang Kaliwa Dam ay nakasalalay sa isang organisasyon, aka our government or PPP at that time. Pero sa bagong administrasyon, nahati ang funding, the operations and management will be paid by a local firm, and the construction by the government, PPP, or foreign loans. So ngayon, alam ko na ang dami nyo ng tanong sa utak nyo, but... I'm gonna add another one. So what is the connection between the water shortage and the Kaliwa Dam? So ayun, na shelf nga ang project ng Kaliwa Dam. But five years later, after all of the environmentalists, after all of the changes, after its first approval, the idea of the Kaliwa Dam project is being presented again. So it kind of makes me wonder why we stopped then with the risk of the Sher Madre and our indigenous people but are wanting to start again now with the exact same risks. So it seems like pareho pa rin ang mga factors nito except for one detail. So according to my research, Pasok British accent, 85% of the $18 billion cost of the dam project is going to be funded by China. At 
at sino naman ang magbabayad ng utang na to? 10 years from now, 20 years from now, tayo rin yun. Kahit bata ka pa rin ngayon, G, 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 G na lang bes. <laughs> Ilang araw lang ang nakalipas nang sinabi ng Prime Minister ng Malaysia sa Presidente natin. Let me read this so I don't get it incorrectly. If you borrow huge sums of money from China and you cannot pay, you know, when a person is a borrower, he is under the control of the lender. So we have to be very careful with that. He said this in, you know, out of warning, out of his own experience of his own government scrapping what he calls unfair Chinese-backed infrastructure projects. So, ano ang sinasabi ko? Hindi ko rin alam! Joke lang. Am I saying that we don't need new alternative sources of water? No, of course not. I know that the threat is real. But I guess my question is, is it really worth the relocation of the IPs, the destruction of the Sierra Madre, the danger of flash floods, the huge debt to China? Sigurado ko na lahat tayo pabor sa paghanap ng bagong sources of water. But is the Kaliwat Dam project really the best project right now, especially with with all of its risks. Ulit, hindi ko sinasabi na expert ako because I'm really not. Pero ang dami ko talagang oras na binuhos, <laughs> pun intended, binuhos sa pagre-research, pagbabasa ng mga facts na to. But let me tell you, it's good to be aware with what's happening in her country. Alam ko na minsan, sobrang dali lang maging apathetic sa lahat ng nangyayari sa country natin. Just leave it all up to the government. You know what I'm saying? Dati, ang dami kong nahanap ng mga dahilan para maging kampante sa lahat ng nangyayari sa bayan natin. Because sure, I grew up in an international school eh. Janina, hindi ko naman naiintindihan yung mga politics. Eh, hindi naman ako naapekto. But the truth is, we'll all eventually be affected by the happenings in our government. It's just a matter of time and we have no excuse to stay uneducated about it. Honestly, I just stayed updated on the news through like Twitter threads and online articles and the rest I just researched to like 4am um, trying to get all of the facts together. From everything that I learned, I was able to form my own informed opinion and I gave you all of the facts so that you guys can form your own opinions as well or even dig deeper than I did. So kung hindi kayo nag agree sa akin, it's okay. I respect that. You can leave your thoughts down below respectfully. Thank you. Again, my goal for this video is not to impose my beliefs or opinions, but just to pose facts and at least start a conversation. Kasi hindi ko alam kung water shortage lang ba talaga ang problema or may mas malaking problema tayong harapin. Ang alam ko lang ay kung hindi tayo kikilos ngayon, tayo rin ang maapaktuhan nito. So, umpisahan natin sa pagditipid ng tubig. Please, take it from somebody who did not have water for 10 days. Water is good. <laughs> It's a big deal, guys. Don't take it for granted. This week, na tuto talaga ako maligo gamit ng parang apat na tabo ng tubig lang. But I do have some good news. Actually, a few hours ago, our water came back. Woot woot. So pwede na ako maligo. Um, so sorry na kung naamoy niyo ko or whatever. Joke lang. <laughs> President Duterte actually ordered to release water to supply the affected areas in Metro Manila. Sabi ni President Duterte na he, pers he will personally hold MWSS, Manila Water, and Manila liable for failure to comply with his order. It's great! Thank you, Lord! May tubig na ulit tayo. But... I still have a question in mind. So kahapon lang niya sinabi to release water and that was Friday and today Saturday nagatubig ka agad kami. So it makes me wonder. There was water this whole time. But where was it? Kasi wala namang nagbago sa panahon pero bigla kaming nagatubig. So ngayon ang tanong ko, water shortage ba talaga ang problema? Just watch me break.